For a little while now, I've been looking for a hub for my iPad that has an extra USB-C port on it, a port on top of the standard power pass-through port that I've come to expect from every USB-C hub. I want a hub with this extra port for two main reasons. Firstly, so I can connect USB-C drives to my iPad while still powering the device. And secondly, so I can connect my Raspberry Pi to the iPad over USB-C while both are externally powered. I think that I finally found that hub. In a tech sent this Nanium one over to me for testing with all my devices. And I was skeptical at first because getting a hub with not just nine ports, but nine ports that all work well is definitely a big ask. But as I think you'll see in this video, Inatech has definitely delivered. At the risk of ruining the watch time metrics for this video, I want to get right to the headline feature, and that's the extra USB-C port. But let me just very briefly outline what the other ports are first. So on this side, we have a USB-C port for power input, a gigabit ethernet port, a VGA port, and an HDMI port. On the other side, we have both a micro and a full-sized SD card. We have two USB 3 ports, one of which supports the BC 1.2 USB extension for faster charging. And then last but not least, we have this extra USB-C port. This is not a power input USB-C. This is a fully fledged data and power delivery to downstream device USB-C port. It's this extra USB-C port that's the standout feature for me on this hub. With this port, I can connect the hub to my iPad, plug in a USB-C device like an SSD or my Raspberry Pi, have data between both of them and power both of them using the hub's dedicated power import. Obviously, this isn't limited to just working with the iPad as a host device. This will work with any laptop or tablet with the power input rated up to 100 watts. And I was able to at least test this on my MacBook Pro 13 inch and my MacBook Pro 16 inch. I tested the throughput of my USB-C drives directly connected to my MacBook Pro and then connected through the hub. Drive throughput when connected through the hub was between 80 and 90% of the throughput when connected directly to the drive. Given the overall speeds we're talking about here, I'm very happy to see the hub deliver well over 400 megabytes per second read and write when connected to a good USB-C drive. Now, the power requirements for these drives are not particularly onerous, and what I really cared about for this setup was whether or not it could power the Raspberry Pi and provide a full data connection over USB-C at the same time. So I ran my standard stress test on a Raspberry Pi and saw absolutely no power throttling whatsoever during the test. The runtime of this test was within a few seconds of what I see when running the test using a standard wall socket power supply. Now, I've actually seen this test throttle on some substandard USB-C wall sockets, so I'm pretty impressed to see the hub deliver enough stable power to get to the end of the test, to get there quickly, and not to throttle the power. As we saw earlier, this hub has plenty of data input ports, and I was quite pleased that it's actually possible to use all of them at once. I attached two USB-A drives, a USB-C drive, and added in two SD cards for good measure. I was able to see all of these drives in the files app on my iPad, and although it was a little slow, I was able to copy files between drives directly from within files. Obviously, I tested this on my MacBook Pro as well, and everything worked just fine. The HDMI port is capable of delivering 4K at 30 frames per second, and if you drop down to 1080p, then you can have 60 frames per second. The HDMI port worked without a hitch on my MacBook Pro and on my iPad, I wish I had more to say about this port, but I don't, everything just worked fine. I wasn't able to test the VGA port, but given the quality of all the other ports, I can't really imagine any problems. So rounding out the list of ports, we have the Gigabit Ethernet port. I hooked up the hub to my MacBook Pro. I ran the iPerf network testing utility and was able to observe data transfer rates of around about 940 megabits per second on my home network. So well within the tolerance for the stated Gigabit throughput. In terms of form factor, Obviously, with nine ports included, this isn't the smallest hub. You can see here how it compares to the size of my iPhone 11 Pro. I think that Inatech has kept the hub as thin as practical, and I think they've made a smart design decision by keeping a lot of flat surface area. I've added some Velcro to mine, which makes it easier to stick some drives to it or my Pi to it when I'm out and about. If this will be something you're interested in, then you can buy this in the UK from Amazon for $49.99 GBP. And in the US on Amazon, you can buy it for $49.99 USD. Links are in the description below. So overall, I'm really happy with this hub. All the ports that I tested work well, work reliably. I was definitely surprised at how well the extra USB-C port worked. Uh, the power delivery is strong, the data rates are great. 
it was definitely better than I expected it to be. I do obviously wish the hub could be a bit smaller, but I think it's about as small as it can be given the number of ports. Personally, I'd take the VGA port out, but I guess a lot of people still use that. I do like the fact that there's a lot of flat surface area, as I said before, and being able to add Velcro to it makes it very practical. And because it's quite flat and slim, it does slot into your bag quite nicely. So this has definitely become my go-to hub. I hope you found this video useful and I hope it was at least a little bit entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.